From the creators of 48 Hours comes an original motion picture adventure, Streets of Fire. A film with a unique look and sound, its spark comes from an exaggerated style, a story of action, and music that is pure rock and roll. People ask me what the story is, I say uh, the Queen of the Hop is been kidnapped by the leader of the pack and soldier boy comes home to do something about it. At 19 years of age, Diane Lane is the youngest but most experienced of the leading actors. A favorite of Francis Ford Coppola, her portrayal of a kidnapped rock singer is unlike any character she's played in her previous 13 movies. When I went in for this audition, this was like the first one where I came in trying my best to come off like a rock person would just being semi-blasé and wearing my leathers and my hair pulled back and I guess he saw a quality that he wanted in LNA. For the soldier of fortune Tom Cody, Hill selected Brooklyn-born Michael Paré, a former restaurant chef. He got his first film role a year ago as Eddie and Eddie and the Cruisers, but sees Streets of Fire as his big break. I like the script. It was, you know, an exciting adventure movie, something John Wayne would take or you know, Gary Cooper would take, so, shoot, I mean, anybody who'd pass that up has got to be in the wrong business. It's doubtful that John Wayne or Gary Cooper would have a sidekick like Amy Madigan. Last seen in Love Child, her role of McCoy was originally written as a man named Mendez, but she convinced Hill to change Hello. it to a woman. He said, look, I like the part of Mendez, and I want to play that part, and I think it would be a real good idea to have a woman play the sidekick. Part of being a director is grabbing a good idea when you hear it. Knock, knock. And she, she turned out to be terrific in the film. Each critically acclaimed in their own right, it is the combined effort of these young actors that gives Streets of Fire its spark. I can't imagine a better grouping of people to survive each other for five months and still, you know, have the glint in your eye from liking everybody. Action! Those who work with director Walter Hill say he captures the most beautiful alleys in the world. His is a unique look, a contradiction of terms. Stark, yet highly stylized, his method has been termed ER, exaggerated realism. That was a catchphrase that uh, we had on the last film I did, 48 Hours. The movie was meant to be taking place in the real, real world of time and space, and yet it needed a certain kind of theatricality. So we, uh, we happen under this phrase, exaggerated realism. Are you crazy, man? I was just bluffing! As in 48 Hours, Hill's newest film, Streets of Fire, makes use of the common ER elements of rain-splattered streets, dark lighting, and smoke. But this time, they were stretched to the limits to give a feeling of unreality to this rock and roll fable. This, I think, was a little tougher than, than most of the others that I've done in terms of its look because if the real world impinges upon the fantasy, the um, illusion of fantasy vanishes so that you had to have absolute control over the visuals. Collaborating on his third film with Hill is cinematographer Andy Laszlo. To achieve this unconventional look, he used unconventional lighting, flashlights, headlights, and hundreds of pieces of neon. We wanted to light down the set. We are reproducing the image not true to its facts. We are enlarging on certain aspects of it. We are reducing certain aspects of it. Not all of this comes from photography. Much of it comes from the sets designed by John Vallone. Vaguely reminiscent of the 50s, they seem familiar, yet somehow unplaceable. It's a city uh, out of time, out of um, any country, uh, nothing that we recognize or, or know of. The combination of sets, lighting, and atmosphere brings Streets of Fire to life and enhance Hill's reputation as a visual master and the main proponent of a style that is uniquely his own. So it becomes very Walter-esque. Making movies is never easy, but that task becomes even more difficult when important scenes involve hundreds of background players. As the assistant director on Streets of Fire, David Sosna was responsible for turning a crowd of professional extras and students into believable characters. Here we go. Anybody not know what to do? Ready and rolling. No director that I've ever worked with ever wants to concern himself with this. 
we have a saying, if they're looking at the background, then something's wrong. They should be looking at the stars. Take a, a group of people and you say, okay, we're rolling, everybody's quiet. You say background action, and the place goes nuts. You can't make them lose control within the framework of what you've asked them to do. They'll run, it's hot, it's tired, it's 5.30 in the afternoon. You can't get them excited enough unless you really blast them a little bit. Besides drumming up enthusiasm, a major part of the AD's job is keeping a safe set. I just tell the crowd, there's people out there and I'm going to fire you if I see you running with your hands up in the air, running with your arms extended. As long as I stay on top of it, as long as we stay on top of it, no, it's not dangerous for an extra. What would be dangerous is if I said, okay, rolling, run like crazy, then I'd hurt 30 people. To add an extra feeling of panic to the kidnap scene, the number of escape exits was reduced from seven to three. It made a bottleneck, it made it jam up. As people were running out the back doors, the rest of the, the people in front were just told to run around without banging into each other, which made it look more exciting. And you just learn certain things after a while. You learn where the cameras are, what lenses are being used, so that you get it so that it looks realistic. The big trick is to do it without hurting anybody. That's what a riot's supposed to look like. Producers Lawrence Gordon and Joel Silver brought in record industry heavyweight Jimmy Iovine to supervise the music, which not only complemented the film, it influenced it. They wanted impact. I recorded the song, and I said, guys, this is what the song has to feel like. You have to make a movie around this song, around the arrangement. Performing four of the songs in the movie is Ellen Aim. Although a singer in her own right, Diane Lane did not actually perform the vocals on the soundtrack. Diane Lane couldn't sing all the songs in the movie because very few people can. The combination of two or three voices combined together electronically and it makes one voice and it really worked for her very well. For the singing group, The Sorrells, Hill combined four actors who had never worked together before. They spent two weeks rehearsing their choreography. The only group appearing as themselves is The Blasters. Their rockabilly sound provides the music for dancer Maureen Jahan, who created such a sensation as the dance double for the star of Flashdance. It is this rock and roll music mixed with a unique visual style and a story of adventure that makes this such an explosive new picture. Streets of Fire. <laughs> 